It's called the gathering right around the word of God. You're going to have some, uh, some responses sprinkled in, in between some hymn verses, and we'll do that as we join in worship on page three in our service folder. Before we get started, though, I'd invite you to please say good morning to those who are going to be worshiping around you today. And then after you've done that, please stay standing and we'll start our worship service. May God bless us today. <laughs> We worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. All our knowledge, sense, and sight lie in deepest darkness shrouded. Your spirit breaks our night with the beams of truth unclouded. You alone to God can win us. You must work all good within us. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yet so often we have despised God's word and failed to gladly hear and learn it. For this and all our sins, we bow before God and humbly ask his forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Gracious Savior, good and kind, Right from light from God proceeding, Open now our heart and mind, Help us by your Spirit's pleading. Hear the cry your people raises, Hear and bless our prayers and praises. God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. 
The scriptures testify about Jesus, who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross to pay for all your sins, and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, praise to you and adoration. Grant that we, your word, may trust, confident of our salvation. While we here below us wonder, till we sing your praises, young. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love through your holy word. And that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command as you lead us through life with the scriptures. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The way to heaven is through a narrow door. And the chosen nation of Israel had rejected that door. But salvation doesn't come based on our race or on who our, our, our parents were or on our last name or anything like that. The door is still open to all who believe. And God promises us in this first lesson from Isaiah his promise of faithful deliverance to those, the remnant, uh, the, remnant the faithful. God says, And I, because of their actions and their imaginations, am about to come and gather all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and the Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your brothers from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. On horses, in chariots, and wagons, and on mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And they will go out and look upon the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. Their worm will not die, nor will their fire be quenched, and they will be loathsome to all mankind. This is God's word. We join in singing our song of praise, We Will Glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the birthright gives us access through the narrow door of heaven, not even being a descendant of one of the patriarchs. 
It is only through faith in Jesus that we are welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. A lesson that we hear from Paul in Romans chapter 9. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption as sons. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all forever praised. Amen. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the natural children who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. This is God's word. We join in singing our song of praise, Go Into the World. I'll sing it the first time through, and then I invite you to join and sing it with me on the second time through. So go into the world. <clears throat> of all the nations. Go ye, go ye into the world, and I will be with you there. I am the vine, you are the branches, ever the fruit to bear. I am the light, you the reflection, every of all the nations. Go ye, go ye into the world, and I will be with you there. Go ye, go ye into the world, and make disciples of all the nations. Go ye, go ye into the world, and I will be with you there. branches, ever the fruit to bear. I am the light, you the reflection everywhere. Go ye, go ye into the world and make disciples of all the nations. Go ye, go ye into the world and I will be with you Out of respect for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, please stand. Our gospel for this Sunday is taken from Luke chapter 13, beginning with the 22nd verse. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west, 
north and south, and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and the children are invited to come forward for the children's message. Morning, everybody. How are you guys today? Hi. Hi. Okay, have a seat. All right. Okay. Now, what's? Can you guys tell me what's a lie? What's a lie? What does it mean when you, if you lie to someone? You don't tell the truth. When you don't tell the truth, like if mom asks you, "Hey, did you make your bed?" and you didn't, but you say you did. Lying. And lying's wrong, right? God's word tells us not to lie. How do we know when someone's lying? Is their liar liar pants on fire? Do their pants start on fire? Is that what it is? No. Does their nose grow like Pinocchio? No. How do we know when someone's lying? If someone's not telling us the truth? Can you always tell? No. No, you can't always tell. But, but one way we can tell when someone tells us a lie is whether or not what they're saying lines up with what God's word says, with what the Bible says. God invites us to look back at his word as the lie detector. The way we can tell if someone is telling us the truth is if they're telling us what it says in here. Like if someone says that Jesus didn't really die for you, is that the truth or is that a lie? That's a lie, because God's word says that Jesus died for me. If someone says, Jesus didn't pay for all your sins, is that the truth or is that a lie? That's a lie. That's a lie, because God's word says Jesus paid for all of my sins. And because God's word tells me so, because God's word tells me so, he promises me that all of us here today, where do we get to go someday? Heaven. To heaven, to be with him, because God tells us the truth in his word. Okay? So let's thank God for the wonderful gift of his word, which always tells us the truth. Okay? Let's fold our hands. Let's say a prayer, okay? Thank you, God, for giving us your holy word, which does not lie. Thank you for giving us your word of truth. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins, which you promise in that word of truth. Thank you, God. Amen. Okay. Thanks for coming up. Thanks. Appreciate the applause. And you can go back with Miss Dory, okay, for Kids Church. And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. And the way God guides us is, of course, through that holy word.
be yours in abundance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The words for our consideration are taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 500 years ago, everyone knew that the Earth was the center of our solar system. Everybody knew it. There was no question. It wasn't debated. It was obvious. Earth is the center of our solar system. But then one guy came along, started asking some questions, and he actually came up with something that was completely different. He said he believed that the sun was the center of our solar system. That man's name was? Starts with a G. Galileo. 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 Everybody snickered and sneered and made snide comments about him. <laughs> Who's this young punk think he is? What are they teaching in those public schools these days? As this guy can't get this right. Come on. They laughed, they mocked him. Galileo. Everybody knows that the Earth, not the Sun, is the center of our solar system. He was branded a heretic by the Roman Catholic Church, lived the rest of his life under house arrest when he continued to propose this. Everybody knew that the Earth was the center of the solar system, and everybody was wrong. Everybody else was wrong. Galileo was right. Just because a lot of people believe something to be true, the majority of people to be something to be true, ev because everybody believes something is true, that's not what makes it true. There are a lot of ideas floating out there about God and faith, heaven, salvation. You don't have to look too hard. Poke around with your friends. Talk religion. Talk, talk it over. See what people believe. And I, I, I bet you that you would find a couple of things that people generally accept as truth, even though, one, something isn't in the Bible, or two, it's even contrary to what Scripture has to say. Galileo, come on. Come on. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that the Earth is the center of our solar system. But is everybody always right? Just because people believe something to be true, is that what makes it true? What percentage of Americans do you think believe in a heaven and a hell? What do you think? Throw a number out there. 80. 20 percent? Oh. 25. 25? 7. A, a poll, a Gallup poll that I found said, said 80. 80% 80 believe that there is a, an afterlife, heaven and hell, or something like that, where good people go to one place, bad people go to a, a, another. 80%, okay? Well, I, I'd say since we're in the Bible Belt, we're probably jacked up a little bit more, you know? Probably, most people in our area where we live believe there's a heaven, believe there's a hell. Okay. How many... Would you say it's a minority or a majority of those people that actually believe in heaven and hell are, say that they're going to heaven? Majority. Oh, it's overwhelming. Overwhelming majority. People who believe in heaven and hell, almost all of them. I, I can think in all my years of pounding pavement, walking the streets, handing out door hangers, talking to people, scribbling out God's great exchange on airplane napkins during flights, I can think of two times that someone said to me, I believe in heaven and hell, and I believe that I'm going to hell. Most everybody who believes in heaven and hell says, yeah, there's a heaven, there's a hell, but we're going there, right? I'm going there, right? Obviously. So most people are going there, right? Only, hell's only for that, those really bad people. 
All the people like Hitler, Stalin, those guys are obviously in hell. But everybody else, it's not like I ever murdered someone. I'm, so yeah, I'd say most people are going to heaven, they say. This question of who was getting into heaven was really weighing on someone's heart in our lesson for today. He believed that there was a heaven. He believed that there was a hell. I should say he or she because it just says someone. He or she believed that there was a heaven, believed that there's a hell. And they were hearing things of Jesus' teachings when he would use phrases like little flock or many will perish. Made him wonder. Made him think. And so, so he, he came to the source of absolute truth and he asked him, Lord, are only a few going, people going to be saved? What Jesus was teaching was, was contradictory, contradicting pretty much what people just accepted as a general truth. Galileo, are you really advocating that the sun is the center of the solar system? Jesus, are you really saying that only a few people are going to be saved? I would wager that many people that day were floored when they heard his answer. I think even his answer today would shock a lot of people in our society. I think it would even shock a lot of Christians. But Jesus busts the myth. This is what he says. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door. The narrow door. Because I tell you, uh, many will try, many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. It's just a myth that most people are going to heaven. It's just not true. God's word tells us that. What we have to keep in mind is the audience of who Jesus was addressing here. Makeup of the audience, people were mostly Jews, mostly Jews, mostly the children of, children of Israel, okay? Uh, and, and this is what Jesus says to these people, many of whom, of course, rejected him as the Savior, as the Messiah. He says, there will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. Jesus says, there's a difference between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you people that are listening to me here today. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were men of faith. They were men who believed in what God was saying. They believed that God's promise of a Messiah would come true. Their faith was in me. Their faith got them into heaven. But you, you keep rejecting me. You don't want me as the anointed one. You don't want me as the Christ. And because of that, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for you. This busted another myth back in those times. Do you remember who, whom did the Jews believe would get, how did the Jews say they would get into heaven? Or why did they get into heaven? Let me know. Why did the Jews believe that they would get into heaven? Okay, because they were Jewish. For the, just for the fact, because we're Jewish, right? I know I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to be with God because I'm a descendant of Abraham. But Jesus says that's not true here. It doesn't matter what blood runs through your veins. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter that your last name is whatever. It doesn't even matter if you're a descendant of a patriarch. Je uh, Paul said in our second lesson for today, for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel nor because they are his descendants are they Abraham's children. Just because you guys come from Abraham's line, that's not what squeaks you through that narrow door to heaven. The door is a little narrower than just the blood that runs through your veins or the last name that you have. I suppose it's kind of like people who, who sometimes will say, oh, I, I, I'm sure I'll go to heaven because uh, I, I'm on a church directory somewhere. Some church somewhere has me on their, on their church register. Or uh, when I invite someone to church, a lot of times when people say, thanks, my mom's very religious. That's good for your mom, but what about you? Mm -hmm. oh, I was raised Baptist. I was raised Catholic. Okay, 
Where are you now? So many people today talk about many different paths to God. You hear that a lot? All paths lead to God, right? People say that all the time. Not true. So many people today say, well, there are all these higher truths that we can glean from every single religion, and we can really you know, pick out the good stuff of what we need to know. Again, not true. Just another myth. So many people say all these varieties of religions are, are, are different denominations. It's all, it doesn't really matter, isn't it? We're all just worshiping the same God under different names. Jesus says to us today, he busts the myth. It's not true. Just because the majority of people believe that isn't what makes it true. Jesus confidently says to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. How is it that Jesus could say this? It's because he's the one who solved our problem. That problem of, of sin, that, that debt of sin that we had racked up. And he's the one who tells us how we get to heaven. He's the only one who knows that. He said in, in another one of Ma in Matthew's gospel, For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. What a terribly exclusive message for our very, very, very inclusive world. But Jesus busts the myth. He's the only one who tells us the how. When you talk to some of those people, that majority of people who believe in heaven and hell and believe, yeah, I'm, of course, well, yeah, I'm going to heaven. What's always interesting to listen to is when you ask them, why? How are you getting there? I don't know. I, I, I think I'm going to heaven. I it's not like I ever killed somebody. I, I mean, I'm, what? I, I'm a nice guy, right? There's such uncertainty. People don't know with confidence. I hope I get there. I guess I'll get there. Maybe I'll get there. I'm pretty sure I'll get there. Let me ask you something. Josh, if your neighbor said to you, if your neighbor asked, it said, guess what, Josh? It says to you this afternoon, you're out grilling for Labor Day weekend. It says, Josh, you're not going to believe what I'm doing on Tuesday. You say, what? Sounds exciting. What are you doing? It says, I'm going to Mars. Really? Wow! You're going to Mars? That's pretty cool. That's awesome. How are you getting there? I don't know. <laughs> Tuesday comes, I'm, I'm planning on going to Mars. Wouldn't you probably impress upon that neighbor that the how is rather important. That you need to know how you're getting from A to B. Jesus stresses the how in our lesson for today. It says the how is extremely important. It's so important because once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you, and, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Just because people buy into the myth that I'm going to heaven because, well, I know there's a God out there somewhere, and eh, I'm pretty good. Doesn't make it true. Even though that might sound logical, might sound reasonable, might even seem fair to human, human logic not what makes it true. Those people sound an awful lot like the people in Jesus' lesson. Well, Jesus, we ate and drank with you. You, you taught in your streets. It struck, taught in our streets. I took my kids to that Tree of Life playground once a week, and they used to play on the park. I, I know who that is. I dropped my kid off at their vacation Bible school one summer, right? I know you. Does everybody know who Dave Ramsey is? Yeah? 
money, money marketer, financial guru. Um, I've read Dave Ramsey's books, um, listened to him on the radio. I've seen him on TV. I've read news articles about him. I even taught one of his, uh, one of his classes to teach people how to get out of debt, how to use his, his technique and principles. I, I know who Dave Ramsey is, okay? But I don't know Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey doesn't know me. He's never invited me to, uh, to give me a job and say, here, I'd like you to do this full time because Schrader, you'd be great at that. He, he hasn't invited me to sit on his board of directors to help drive the direction of his corporation. Alyssa and I don't send them Christmas cards. We don't go over to each other's houses whenever we're in town. I know who he is, but I don't know him. And he doesn't know me. Getting through that narrow door of heaven is, it takes more than just being able to pick Jesus out of the lineup. Oh yeah, he's the guy with the beard and the, the kind of long hair. There's, that's okay, I'm good. It's about knowing that God picked you picked you from the beginning of time, before time began, and chose you to be his own. It's not about knowing, oh, you know, there's a God out there somewhere. The door is a lot narrower than that. It's about knowing the fact that God reached through the depths of hell and pulled you from the, the, the clutching hands of Satan. That's why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah, a very exclusive message because this is the only way, but so inclusive because it's for everyone. Everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a man, a woman, a child, young, old, black, white, yellow, purple, green. It doesn't matter if you were born in the United States or in Guatemala. It doesn't matter. It's for everybody. This is the only way. The reason why Jesus can say that is because Jesus and only Jesus is the one who took care of your problem with sin and mine. Jesus and only Jesus is the one who gave his life, who died the death that, that I deserve. Jesus and only Jesus is the one who conquered death and rose victorious on Easter Sunday. Muhammad didn't do that. Buddha didn't do that. Gandhi didn't do that. No motivational speaker on television did that for you. Only the Son of God did that. Only the Son of God demonstrated such amazing love. It's in the spirit of that love that Jesus promises you and me today that people will come from east and west and north and south and will take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. There at that feast, you and I will dine forever with our Savior and celebrate the victory of the Lamb of God. We'll celebrate for all eternity. There are all those myths, ideas, misunderstandings about God and heaven and uh, grace and salvation, they're, they're peppered all, the, all over the place out there. But none of those ideas, none of those misunderstandings come even close, remotely close to doing justice to the amazing truth of what God's word has done for us. That he pulled us off of that wide path to ruin and destruction and he placed us on the narrow path, looking at the door, his son, our savior, Christ Jesus. And now, in his love and, and in his amazing, infinite wisdom, God invites you and me to partake in that work. To each and every day act as a living witness and show others the truth. Point them in the direction to the narrow door, the narrow door of their Savior, which lies behind it an everlasting feast for all eternity. May God bless us as we use our time, our talents, our treasure, everything that he's given to us for that purpose of sharing this good news about the narrow door to heaven. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand.
May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed found uh, in your worship folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers are going to be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please would fill those out. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book as well. After that, we have the opportunity to use our treasures to support the gospel ministry. stand for the prayer of the church. In our prayers this morning, we will be including our sister in the faith, Kathy Allers. Uh, Kathy had back surgery on Friday and, and everything went well, so we'll be praying for her recovery as well as her, uh, her healing for her knee. She is also having knee problems as well. So we'll take those press uh, requires to our holy physician, our heavenly father. We join in prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to come to us when people were confused and in doubt uh, in their misunderstandings of Scripture. You came through your Holy Spirit to clarify what Jesus meant when he told his disciples that he would die and rise again. You came to them when they were timid and afraid, and you moved them to speak boldly about the great things you have done to save the world from sin. We have to admit, Heavenly Father, that we too have felt uncertain and hesitant. Therefore, we ask that you would give us the courage and conviction of faith 
to speak to others about the Savior that you enabled the disciples, as you enabled the disciples to do on Pentecost. Let us experience the joy of leading others to discover the way, the truth, and the life through Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, Holy Physician, we ask that you would look upon our sister in the faith, Kathy Ollers, as she continues to recover from her back surgery. We thank you for the successful surgery and the blessing that you allowed her doctors and nurses to be. We ask that you would continue uh, to lead her on that road to recovery, and if it be your will, Lord, let it be a short one. Lord, use her family, her husband, and her children to continue to encourage her with your holy word, with the news that you care about her, that you cared about her so much that you were willing to go to the cross. Allow her to continue to be reminded that by her family and friends at all times and in every situation. Be with her also as she continues to struggle with her knee problems. Uh, allow the doctors who will be working on that to do their job to the best of the abilities that you bless them. Watch over her, Lord, and continue to comfort her with the only thing that truly does comfort, the message of your love which comes to us through your holy word. Hear us, Lord, also as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer. Empower us, Lord, by your word and sacraments to seize every opportunity to share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ in love and to the glory of you. Open the hearts of people everywhere so that thousands, many thousands, will enter the kingdom of believers through the gospel, which your church proclaims throughout the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer, amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our God is so generous. And he comes to us with forgiveness and very tangible means as we participate in Holy Communion. Because the Bible has convinced us that Jesus' body and blood are present in the Lord's Supper, and that receiving this sacrament together is a public statement of complete oneness in our beliefs, we now invite to the Lord's Supper members of this congregation and other wells and ELS churches. Our congregation doesn't want to be presumptuous and put you in the position of stating your agreement with our convictions before we have had an opportunity to explain them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own, so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Let's go. 
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let your mercy now we pray, and your peace be our possession. Grant us from our sin release, Lord of mercy, grant us peace. You may be seated and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Also, take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. May this strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. <clears throat> now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this
this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand and join me in giving thanks with the Song of Simeon found on page 14 in our worship folder. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the singing of our closing hymn. This is the threefold truth. Three full truth of 
everybody here today. Uh, happy Labor Day weekend. Um, as you maybe or maybe not don't know, uh, I'm not serving at Gethsemane anymore in the, the first services. Everything's back to normal. Um, they have a, a vacancy pastor, a retired pastor who's serving them now, Pastor Quant, and he'll be there um, kind of indefinitely until they get their new pastor. Uh, as I think I mentioned last week, Pastor Beagie, um, returned the call. He's the second person to do that. So on Wednesday, our brothers and sisters at Gethsemane are having another call meeting to, to uh, see if they can get a new shepherd. So please keep them in your prayers as they continue to look for uh, who will be their next pastor. A um, couple things in the uh, announcements and, and uh, worship folder on the blue sheet. Uh, next week, kickoff Sunday, we're going to be doing the service outside, God willing, if it doesn't rain. Uh, so we'll be doing that again like we did last year. There will just be the one service, just the 11 o'clock service. So uh, if you come early, that's great because you can help set up chairs and everything like that. Your help would be appreciated. But uh, there is no Bible class, uh, nothing like that. But uh, just the service. And then afterwards, we're going to be having uh, our tailgate party um, where uh, you're free to please bring a dish. Uh, and we're going to have some, uh, some good Carolina barbecue uh, as the main course. But if you could bring a dish to pass, that would be fantastic. Um, you can see all the other details. We're going to have the moonwalk and face painting and some, some other stuff for the kids and everything. And just be able to enjoy the wonderful fellowship that we have uh, being brothers and sisters in Christ and celebrate as we kick off our new, uh, new year. Next Sunday will be the, the start of a new uh, worship series that we're going to be going through, an eight-week series. Um, called Love Takes Time, and uh, we're going to be talking for the next eight weeks with an emphasis on how, because of the love that Christ has put in our hearts, how can we use our time to God's glory, whether it be with our spouse or whether it be with our kids or time with our congregation or our neighbors or friends. How can we use the time that God blesses us with to his glory for his good purpose? So uh, we'll be looking forward to that in Bible study as well as in uh, the worship services. Um, there are a couple of these sprinkled out throughout the fellowship area. Uh, the ushers also will be handing some out. Uh, these are the postcards that we sent out to some people in the area, uh, but we do have extras. So please grab some, hand them to your friends, hand them to your neighbors. Um, if you're not gonna see them at all this week, uh, you can put a stamp on the back and you can mail it to them, but you do have to put the stamp on because the, post, the postage isn't paid for. So please, please take as many as you want and invite as many people to bring them to our, our service so they can hear about the way, the truth, and the life, our Savior Jesus. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is also a new Bible study that we'll be starting in October um, on the book, The Theology of the Cross. Um, since we finished up digging deeper, this is a new study that we're going to be going through.